Benjamin Norton Bugby, Sacramento Champagne King, an abbreviated presentation on the life of B.N. Bugby, based on his biography written by Kevin Knauss, available on Amazon. A longer and more animated presentation is offered by Kevin to groups who wish to hear about this California pioneer's colorful life. With this 1848 map of the gold fields of California, President Polk confirmed the discovery of gold in California and the rush was on. A young Benjamin Bugby, born in 1827, heard the news while working in Massachusetts and decided to trek to California for an adventure. After a long voyage by sea and land, Bugby arrived in California in June of 1849 and went directly to the gold fields along the American River. He mined at Condenbar, Rock Springs, the confluence of the north and south forks of the American River, Big Gulch, and Negro Bar. For a short time, he had a trading post at Rock Springs. He would eventually buy land near Brown's Ravine on the south fork of the American River. The Natoma water ditch ran through the property, providing water for his future vineyard. Bugby's father died in 1849, and word of his death eventually reached Bugby in California. He returned to his family home in Connecticut to pay his respects. In 1852, he returned to California on the steamer Columbia. As noted on the passenger list, Bugby was traveling with a lady. The lady was his new wife, Mary Jane. With a new wife, Bugby did not return to mining right away. He tried his hand at a number of occupations, such as managing the Monte Cristo Hotel. He opened up a furniture store in Sacramento and advertised goods imported from the East Coast. But the furniture business did not work out. Like so many miners of his time, Bugby returned to his roots and went into farming. He bought some property along the American River and started growing vegetables. The farm was halfway between Sacramento and Negro Bar. Today, the farm would be along Sunrise Avenue in the Gold River area of Sacramento County. From this vantage point, he could see the Sacramento Valley Railroad being built up to Negro Bar. He'd heard that Theodore Judah, who had engineered the Sacramento Valley Railroad, had also laid out a town above Negro Bar. In 1856, Bugby bought several lots in the new town of Folsom, the terminus for the Sacramento Valley Railroad. All of his lot purchases cost him $41. The lots in blue were his first purchases. He also bought some lots over the drift mines he had opened back in 1850. Lot 10 in Block 9 of the town of Folsom was the site of one of his drift mines under the town of Folsom. Plans for a new parking structure in Folsom in 2010 confirmed the drift mining activity under the historic town and correlates to the drift mines Bugby worked. The new town of Folsom was in the new Sacramento County Township of Granite. Bugby saw his opportunity for a regular paycheck and ran for constable of Granite Township and won in 1856. In 1858, he gained notoriety for rounding up a gang of thieves and highway robbers who had terrorized the Folsom region. He parlayed his crime-fighting record into a successful campaign for Sacramento County Sheriff in 1861. In the 1800s, the county sheriff was also the ex officio tax collector for state and local taxes. Bugby publicized the different locations where he would be in the county to collect taxes from local residents. The sheriff would remain the tax collector until Bugby forced a split of these duties 38 years later when he would win the office of tax collector, separate from the sheriff's office. In 1863, Bugby would lose the nomination for the sheriff's office in the Union Democratic Party to James McClatchy, who was then the editor of the Sacramento Daily Bee. McClatchy and Bugby had traveled together from the East Coast to California in 1849. But any pioneering kinship would evaporate and the two men would become bitter political rivals over the next several years. The loss of the nomination and position as sheriff was blunted by Bugby's new focus back to agriculture. He had purchased several hundred acres in El Dorado County along the South Fork of the American River in 1861. Even as sheriff, he was expanding the raisin and wine production of the small vineyards on the property of his Natoma Vineyards. The 1866 Government Land Office map shows B.N. Bugby Distillery, B.N. Bugby's Old House, and B.N. Bugby's New House. 
The new map on the right from 1954, before Folsom Lake was completed, shows the approximate location of his original land ownership in Section 16. Note the Natoma Water Canal flume across Brown's Ravine on his property. By 1864, Bugby had diversified the Natoma Vineyard and was selling grapevine cuttings that he had propagated to other farmers to start vineyards. His success at promoting the wine industry in California would lead to a glut of wine, depressed prices, and a cash flow squeeze for Bugby in later years. A good cash crop for Bugby was raisins. He had learned how to properly dry, cure, pack, and ship raisins across California. He helped pioneer the raisin industry in California. While raisins were good and won him awards at the state fair, the real money was in wine and brandy. In 1867, he was advertising his spirits throughout California. Bugby had no shortage of enemies. As constable and sheriff, he had arrested lots of men. He had overseen the execution of two men as sheriff. And much to the anger of some people, Bugby employed Chinese labor at the Natoma Vineyard. After an arson fire at the Natoma Vineyard, Bugby advertised that he would pay a reward for the arrest and conviction of those responsible for the fire. Regardless of the arson setback, Bugby continued advertising products from his Natoma Vineyard and kept winning awards at the state fair for his raisins, wine, branding, and sparkling wines. An unfortunate accident occurred in the spring of 1869. While traveling from their just-completed large house on a hill overlooking the Natoma Vineyard, Mary Jane and Bugby were traveling to Mormon Island to catch a stagecoach to Folsom. Mary Jane was thrown from the horse she was riding on. She was drug across the ground and hit her head on a rock. When she finally was freed from the horse, Bugby rushed to her side, only to have her die in his arms. Eighteen years of marriage had come to an end. She was buried in the Folsom Cemetery. Later, when Bugby had moved to Sacramento and bought a burial plot in Sacramento, he had her remains disinterred from Folsom and brought down to Sacramento. He then had this memorial carved on his obelisk grave marker at his cemetery plot. After a short period of mourning, Bugby had to get back to the Natoma Vineyard. By 1870, he had figured out how to make a drinkable champagne or sparkling wine, and he had also invested significant amounts of money in a new patented Johnston brandy still that shortened the time grape brandy could be brought to market. Bugby determined that a great way to market his new champagnes was to commission some party music to accompany imbibing his new product. He hired a young man by the name of Hugo Yonke to compose Bugby's Champagne Gallop. The cover of the sheet music featured the image of Bugby, surrounded by grape tendrils, champagne flutes overflowing, and champagne corks exploding, fitting for its 4th of July release. He also had Yankee compose the Bugby Champagne Waltz. The cover of this sheet music featured the Natoma Vineyard, with Bugby's large house on the hill overlooking the vineyard and winery operations. A disastrous fire tore through Folsom in 1871, destroying a building Bugby owned that was a storehouse for thousands of dollars of inventory. The gossip around town was that Bugby himself had deliberately set the fire to collect insurance money. He was never arrested or formally charged with starting the fire, but he did have money problems. The Natoma Water and Mining Company refused to pay him the $19,000 he had been awarded for the loss of Natoma Vineyard property when they constructed a flume across Brown's Ravine. He had mortgaged the Natoma Vineyard for $30,000 and invested heavily in the new Johnston Brandy Distillery machine. There was also the growing glut of wine on the market leading to stagnant prices and flat consumption. All of these factors put a squeeze on Bugby's liquidity. Bugby continued to market his wines, brandies, and sparkling wines heavily, along with his awards and gold medal from the state fair. 
At the heart of the controversy with the Natoma Water and Mining Company was who owned the land the water ditch and flume were built on. The Natoma Water and Mining Company contended they were there first, having constructed the ditch in 1854, and they were entitled to the land. Bugby sued the Natoma Water and Mining Company in 1873 in Eldorado County and won. But the Natoma Company refused to pay him the $19,000. The dispute would continue to be contested all the way to the United States Supreme Court. The continued litigation, national recession triggered by the demonetization of silver in 1872, and heavy debt Bugby had acquired, caused the Pacific Mutual Life Insurance Company, who had lent Bugby $30,000, to foreclose on his property. In 1874, Pacific Mutual Life Insurance won a judgment against Bugby and his new wife, Martinette. The famed Natoma Vineyard was ordered sold to the highest bidder in 1874. Bugby was able to forestall the land sale for a couple of years. While he was essentially out of the winery business, he tried to sell other items such as eucalyptus trees, which were seen as the newest forestry product in California. By 1877, Bugby had lost his land and his mine. In a drunken rage over his circumstances, he trashed his nice home and then attempted to shoot the constable that had come to arrest him at his fulsome home for disturbing the peace. While he will ultimately be acquitted of attempted murder, his close friend, Sacramento County Sheriff Moses Drew, encouraged him to leave Sacramento for a spell. Bugby exiles himself to San Francisco where he picks up work at the U.S. Mint. He also pledges sobriety at a gospel temperance meeting in the city. In what may have been a major boost to Bugby's disposition, the United States Supreme Court rules in his favor over the Natoma Water and Mining Company. This was a rare victory for a small landholder who had taken on a large corporation. Alas, his winery and vineyard empire had collapsed, never to be rebuilt. As a counterbalance of the good news, Martinette, his second wife, filed for divorce. But riding on the victory over the Natoma Water and Mining Company, Bugby returns to Sacramento and is hired as a Sacramento County Sheriff Deputy by his good friend Moses Drew and marries Julia Florinda Weeble, the daughter of a Methodist preacher. The good times did not last long as Moses Drew left the position as Sacramento County Sheriff and Bugby lost his deputy income. At the age of 52, Bugby now had to scramble to reinvent himself and generate an income. One of Bugby's gigs was to be a paid expert witness in the hydraulic mining debris trial against the Gold Run Ditch Company. Bugby testifies that when he mined at Big Gulch in Negro Bar, the debris flowing down from the hydraulic mines was not present. This debris was filling up the river channels, causing a problem for riverboat navigation. Bugby was cross-examined by A.P. Catlin, also a California pioneer, who had helped organize the Natoma Water and Mining Company. They had a friendly, if not frosty and testy, exchange in the courtroom. Bugby would not go back to, or go near, anything having to do with vineyards or alcohol. He had been shut out of his first profession of law enforcement. So he fell back on his marketing skills. He marketed a variety of different products, including the locally produced Bundock Butter Cooler, made of terracotta. The base and lid were filled with water and kept the butter cool through evaporative cooling. This cooling system of sorts gave Bugby the idea for a refrigerated railroad car. He patented his terracotta-lined, water-filled boxcar in 1883. However, he probably made more money from the butter cooler than from the refrigerated freight car. In 1885, Bugby was able to sell his remaining property in Folsom and move permanently to Sacramento. This must have been a bittersweet moment as he had to leave the place he fell in love with in 1849, the Folsom region, but at least a permanent place to call home for him and Julia. Bugby continued to expand his marketing opportunities by becoming an insurance and real estate agent. He marketed numerous properties throughout Northern California, some he would later own. In this 1886 ad for land for sale by Bugby, he lists his title as U.S. Commissioner. It is unclear how Bugby became appointed a U.S. Commissioner in Sacramento. 
His longtime friend Moses Drew had gone to work as a U.S. Marshal and worked closely with federal district court judges in San Francisco. One of the judges was Lorenzo Sawyer, who had been a California State Supreme Court Justice. Bugby was well known in California for his victory over the Natoma Water and Mining Company, along with other litigation he was involved with as Sheriff of Sacramento County. One of Bugby's first actions to grab headlines as a U.S. Commissioner was arresting a gang of men who had driven Chinese laborers off the hop fields in Nicholas, California. Bugby would base his detention of these men on federal charges because their actions violated the Berlin Game Treaty and a U.S. statute making it a crime to conspire to deprive citizens equal protection under the law. Even though Justice Sawyer was on Bugby's side, the judicial system at the time was not. Eventually, all of the men who harassed the Chinese laborers had the charges dropped against them. But Bugby was not finished. He would go on to have multiple Chinese men and women arrested on slavery charges. The accusation was that certain Chinese individuals in Sacramento were buying young Chinese women and importing them to Sacramento to work as prostitutes. This led to a heated exchange with the defense attorney, General Carey, for the accused Chinese. Carey would punch Bugby outside of a courtroom only to have sheriff deputies intervene and stop the fight. U.S. District Court judges determined slavery could not be a federal crime because it had been abolished by the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. Even though Bugby lost the legal battle, he was successful in spiriting away several young Chinese women out of Sacramento and down to San Francisco to safety. The position as U.S. Commissioner did not pay very well. When Moses Drew was re-elected as Sheriff of Sacramento County, Bugby jumped at the chance for a steady paycheck and to get back into law enforcement. He would serve as undersheriff to Drew and several other sheriffs through 1892. By this time, Bugby had become thoroughly disgusted with party politics. At the age of 65, he ran again for Sheriff of Sacramento County as an independent candidate. His campaign was more against party politics than his skills for the position of sheriff. He lost the race. With time to reflect on his loss, Bugby mounted another independent candidacy for sheriff, but this time with a much broader platform. Again, he did not tout his skills so much in law enforcement as his proposal for a jubilee system of government. He penned a manifesto loosely based on the concept of jubilee from the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. It can be seen as addressing the many problems that he felt led to the Natoma Vineyard demise and his bankruptcy. Two big items were limiting land ownership and allowing silver to be monetized again. It was widely believed that the demonetization of silver in 1872 led to a currency contraction in the U.S. triggering the Great Recession. Bugby lost, although if women had been allowed to vote, as he advocated, Bugby may have fared better. However, Bugby was not done with politics. Inspired by William Jennings Bryan and his candidacy partially built on his call for bringing back silver as currency, Bugby decided to run as a candidate for Sacramento County tax collector. The only problem was that the tax collector position was tied to the sheriff's office. Bugby successfully argued against Hiram Johnson, who was representing the Sacramento County Sheriff who did not want to lose the tax collector position, that Sacramento County had failed to properly combine sheriff and tax collector as required by state law. As the only real candidate on the ballot, the others were write-in candidates, Bugby won and forever split the tax collector position from the sheriff's office in Sacramento County. Bugby would lose the next election cycle as better organized and funded Republicans and Democrats entered the race for tax collector. He settled into retirement caring for Julia, who was afflicted with mental health issues. But Bugby was one of the last living California 49ers in the area and still garnered some newspaper coverage like this article about his wearing a shawl for comfort and warmth. Bugby would have to sell his home to care for Julia, who was admitted to the Napa State Hospital. Benjamin Norton Bugby died on November 19, 1914. A few years later, Julia would die and be buried next to him and Mary Jane at the historic Sacramento Cemetery. Part of Bugby's legacy in the region can still be seen. 
on the trail from the Mormon Island Dam of Folsom Lake and Brown's Ravine, an astute hiker will notice this stone wall cellar. It is the remnants of Bugby's house on the hill, shown on the cover of Bugby's Champagne Waltz. Even though the home site is within the boundaries of the Folsom State Recreation Area, the home site is above the higher water level of Folsom Lake. If you like this presentation about Benjamin Norton Bugby and would like to learn more about him, my book, Benjamin Norton Bugby, Sacramento Champagne King, is available on Amazon.